Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, let us have understanding on the generics concepts in the .NET. So, what are generics? Generics is a mechanism to develop parameterized type classes. So, I mean, this might be harder to understand for few people but if something is not specific that is generic uh, that's in a, a simple way like uh, if you already know some of the concepts of dotnet then you should be knowing uh, about the list of t so here the same list class works with any type of object like you can store uh, or you can add list of persons list of employees list of anything you can add so this is called a, a parameterized generic type we can create generics at class level and method level it is best for code reusability like you can write one class and that can be reused for any type of objects and we can impose rules while creating the generics Assume if you want to restrict your generic class to work only with reference types, then you can use where t class. So this is the constraint that you are putting on your class. I'm sorry. So below all uh, the different generic constraints that you can put on your generic class. So here, uh, this is an example for a generic class. <coughs> uh, my class name is generic example. And as this is a parameterized type, I'm just adding this T in uh, the angle braces. And here where T, so this class only accepts the reference types, this class only accepts the struct. I mean, here we are restricting the class with some constraints. So if you want to instantiate the object inside your generic class, then you can use this new. And if you want to make sure that the generic class can only work with any particular interface, then you can write the interface name. Like here, I'm just written uh, uh, I custom interface. So if you don't understand anything here, you need not worry because I'll explain all these things in this video. Here, I have created a console application. Let us discuss about a scenario. You are working in a software company and you got a requirement. What the requirement states is you have to write a class and you need to add a method. That method should return values at odd index inside a array. So you will be starting something like this public class utility as and also there is one more requirement is this class should only work with integer data type so private as we need to work with the integer array i'm writing this as null and here i'm writing constructor which accepts int array And here I'm writing a method and here I'm creating a list of int here I'm iterating in that array so here i am checking if the index is odd that means percentage two and then remainder equal to one the index will be a odd index and here i am adding 
that particular value to the result list array of i and here i'm right i'm returning the result let us test our code i'm writing integer array creating a utility object and I'm passing in the array and here I'm calling that get values at odd index now let us run this code It should return 2 because 2 is at index 1 that is the odd index. So this code is working perfectly fine and you will use this code to the production and it is available to the users. Now as part of enhancements you get an you got another requirement where you have to write similar kind of logic for decimals so what some developers do is they'll do copy and paste and they'll name it as decimal utility and they'll write decimal So this is how some developers will do, but and then they'll use it like decimal array is equal to BC one point two two point two three point two. They'll write something like this and they'll use the desk utility class so they'll write something like this and in future you are keep on getting these kind of requirements for different types like sometimes you may some or one time you got a requirement to support person type then employee type, then car type, then bike type. So, what will be the outcome if you follow this approach? You will be end up creating multiple classes with the same logic. In software industry, people appreciate code reusable. So, this is not the better way to write the code. Instead, what we can do is we can make this class as a generic. So, how we can make this class as a generic you can write t here so here instead of t you can write a you can write b you can write c you can write anything but in general it's a common way to use t because this is a template it's a template class you can use it with any data type and after that you have to make this as t you can assume like at the time of writing this class you don't know that what type it will be called so if you here you are just assuming this as a t and here we will be returning the type that we get inside this list that all now you made this class as a generic now you have to make changes here like you have to pass the type this is mandatory here we are passing integer array so the parameterized type that you are passing here will come to here and 
it will be reflected inside these T's wherever you are using T there it will be replaced and here you have to write something like utility of decimal Now let us run this code. If we see this result, it should have value 2.4 because that value is at odd index. So this code is working fine. And later you've got another requirement where you need to implement the similar logic for the person class. So let us create a class. and now write the similar logic that we have written over here Let me add one more object. So if we run this code, the same class is working with the person type also. So in future, you may get requirement to support n number of types, but you can use the same class for all the types this is giving terms of code reusability